Hey, what up, YouTube and G Team? It is Major G, and uh, today something very, uh, very big has happened. Um, the Ready Player One trailer has just come out, and uh, if you're not familiar with this, Ready Player One is like an 80s kid's dream novel. Um, so it's basically, it takes place in this uh, future um, where basically everyone is poor, but everything is, uh, everything is, uh, uh, everything is over the internet. Um, inflation is high, jobs are low. And, uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Indentured servitude becomes a thing if you can't pay any of your bills, which pretty much no one can. Um, and the story centers around this nerd. Oh, um, who, uh, by the way, I forgot to mention, um, there are two major tech companies. Um, there's one major corporation, and then there's one that was started by a Bill Gates-ish kind of figure, or Steve Jobs-ish kind of figure, where, um, but the guy was a huge geek. And, um, and so all of his services are free, um, with some paid service, with some paid, um, things here and there. Um, and that's basically what everything runs off of, is this guy's uh, is this guy's uh, 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 um, patents, um, his open source patents, and uh, everything is done through this this virtual reality simulator um, by the name of Oasis, and um, so this guy actually just died, or he died like ten years prior, or something like that, five or ten years prior, but uh, he did kind of a a Gold D Rogers kind of thing where. Um, slash Gold D. Rogers slash uh, Willy Wonka kind of thing where he uh, he left this treasure um, for people to find uh, within his within his uh, uh, his his world his universe uh, called Oasis and um, it's like everything in this, every this guy was a huge '80s nut. He loved all, everything '80s: movies, music, video games, all sorts of books, all sorts of stuff like that. And so you have all these good people who are like, just like One Piece, just vying for this for this treasure and just battling each other for this treasure. And you have this soup, this, and it comes to this kid. Um, who is a super fan, but he's poor, so he doesn't have all the best stuff, and he just kind of stumbles onto the very first clue. By the way, this guy, when since this guy died like ten, five, ten years before, no one, no one has found a single clue um, until this kid does. So uh, yeah, um, and that's basically where our where our story begins. Um, so I'm actually, there are a lot of elements to this. I actually am surprised that they're actually able to make this considering all the different references that there are. Um, I would have thought that it would have been a logistics nightmare, a license, sorry, not logistics, a licensing nightmare for anyone to even attempt to make this movie. Um, and, uh, hopefully... To do it right, uh, it looks like I'm looking at my screen and it says Warner Brothers is making it. So I'm hoping that there's uh, that Warner Brothers is able to pull some kind of deal together with with uh, other studios so that they can uh, so that they can uh, uh, get some of these licenses to make it an, a truly epic film. Um, and I would have to say probably the one thing I am looking forward to is the end battle when this dude is able to get freaking leopard on from spider-man and uh and like and all these other, and all of his other companions uh all have their 
all have their giant robots. Uh, like you see Gundams and Voltrons there. And uh, what else? There's some there's some other ones. But like the main character has Lepidon. So uh, that's what I'm really looking forward to seeing. That would be really awesome. Uh, one dude has Ultraman. That's right. One dude, one dude has Ultraman. Like it's awesome. It's totally awesome. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, is seeing some of these, seeing some of these things brought to the live action stage. So uh, let's go ahead and get on with this. Uh, it's time for Ready Player One. Um, oh, and by the way, I should mention this is pretty much unlike a lot of other things uh, that um, that. Uh, <laughs> That I like, which are another a lot of other. This is unlike other things, which is that uh, usually I'm like, oh, you know, I knew about this ten years ago. I actually first read this this year, and um, mainly because I heard this movie was coming out. So uh, I I just want kind of wanted to get behind, uh, see what what it was about, and I'm very curious to see how it's going to be handled. So let's go ahead ahead and uh, get on with this. Ready Player One. Uh, actually, let's just go ahead. Ready, player one. Let's go. My name's Wade Watts. My dad picked that name because it sounded like a superhero's alter ego, like Peter Parker or Bruce Banner. But he died when I was a kid. My mom, too. And wow, that's I basically exactly how I pictured it. Sitting here in my tiny corner of nowhere. There's nowhere left to go. Nowhere. Except the Oasis. A whole virtual universe. Yes! The freaking DeLorean! Things they can do. That is so right. They stay because of all the things they can be. Can you feel this? Um, yeah. It's the only place that feels like I mean anything. Oh, I remember that scene. The Oasis was the brainchild of James Halliday. Hello. If you're watching this, I'm dead. I created a hidden object, an Easter egg. The first person to find the egg will inherit half a trillion dollars and total control of the Oasis itself. Who is this Parzival? And how the hell is he winning? Find him. This isn't just a game. I'm talking about actual life and death stuff. The Oasis. The world's most important economic resource. I mean, it's nothing less than a war for control of the future. And our rebellions, Wade. Like many of you, I only came here to escape. Oh my god! That was the chick from uh, Overwatch! It was the Gundam! The Oasis. The, oh my god, the Iron Giant. Oh my god, yes. Yeah. So, I'm gonna go ahead and watch this one more time. Let's go ahead and get this started. Here we go. My name's Wade Watts. My dad picked that name because it sounded like a superhero's alter ego. Like Peter Parker or Bruce Banner. But he died when I was a kid. My mom too. And I ended up here. Sitting here in my tiny corner of nowhere. There's nowhere left to go. Nowhere. Except the Oasis. A whole virtual universe. Well, let me take you on a trip around the world and back. People come to the Oasis for all the things they can do. And you won't have to wait to see. 
But they stay because of all the things they can be. Can you feel this? Um, yeah. It's the only place that feels like I mean anything. The Oasis was the brainchild of James Halliday. Hello. If you're watching this, I'm dead. I created a hidden object, an Easter egg. The first person to find the egg will inherit half a trillion dollars and total control of the Oasis itself. Oh, that was the Tron bike! And how the hell is he winning? Find him. This isn't just a game. I'm talking about actual life and death stuff. The Oasis. The world's most important economic resource. And it's nothing less than a war. We're in control of the future. Welcome to the Rebellion, Wade. That must have been the final scene. Or not scene. Oh my god. I only came here to escape. But I found something much bigger than just myself. Are you willing to fight? Help us that... save the Oasis. Yo, was that Chucky? My name's Wade Watt. Sorry. So, I'm super hyped about that. Um, there are some things that were missing, but there are, it looks like they added some extra stuff. Um, so, yeah, there, it looks like pretty much the plot's going to be intact. Um, I didn't see anything about him living in his own apartment, which is, after, which basically, like, after he finds this stuff, he starts making a lot of money. Um, or he finds a way to make a lot of money. And, uh, but... Uh, yeah, his main, the main antagonists are the rival corporation. And what you saw, let me see. So, like, what you start seeing, like, so, like, here, uh, Innovative Online Industries, that's the rival corporation. And that's, uh, so what ends up happening is that they start, oh, that's why that chick looks familiar. Okay. All right. I'm going to mention this real quick. I know some dude got tired of me saying this during like during Black Panther, but I was trying to figure out why she looked familiar. That's uh, Hannah John Common from um, from Killjoys. That's why I was I was trying to remember. I was like, why does she look familiar? That's why she's from Killjoys. Um, here we go. That's what I was looking for. So stuff like that, um, where you see all those IOI people, and then there's another scene. Yeah, here we go. And this. So that's that's the other uh, corporation. So like what they do is they have like an, a full-on army of people going after this 24-7 just trying to find these eggs, uh, this these Easter eggs. Uh, so, uh, or these clues to get this Easter egg. So, uh, but like their hearts and souls aren't really into it. And... Oh, nice! I didn't notice that before. So one of the cool things about this is that uh, one thing that you're going to realize, uh, what I noticed is that they kept a lot of the heart in it, which is like, for example, you have my man driving personally um, in my personal favorite wheels of all freaking time. The freaking... Uh, the freaking Back to the Future uh, 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 DeLorean. That's my personal favorite wheels of all time. And then, um, and then you have stuff like what was it? Uh, and then the eighties music where they're playing Jump, and then they played the Back to the Future uh, dingle, uh, ding, ding, jingle at the end. Um, and, and like, what else? I just saw it. they had King Kong in there. King Kong showed up, and then yeah, that's what I was looking for. So this right here, this boombox right here, you could see him thrust it up in the air, and that was obviously that was obviously a um, 
uh, oh my god, what's that John Q? Say anything. That was a say anything reference. Um, and then you have that right there, like that move that, that the girl just did, and then that hat right there, those are obvious references to Michael Jackson uh, from the 80s. Uh, so that's awesome. And because this is supposed to take place in the future, there are some things that they threw in here but aren't necessarily part of the movie, or part of the, the story, such as the main chick from Overwatch right here. She's in, they threw her in there. That was a brilliant move. And then you have Chun Li. I didn't realize Chun, I didn't notice Chun Li at first, but that's awesome. Chun Li, Chun, that's great. Uh, but then I got, I got hyped when I saw my dude, when I saw my freaking joint right here, the freaking Gundam, dude. The Gundam, the RX 78A Gundam from Mobile Suit Gundam. Yes! See, in the book, they they pretty much just reference him. Um, and somebody else has him. So I don't know who's going to be piloting the Gundam. That is awesome. I remember they mentioned in the book that there was a wing Gundam. And I think the G Gundam was at the final fight, too. So, yeah, you can actually see it a little better here. See, you can see the blue. You can see the blue right there. And that's that's the Gundam shield, and that so that's pretty freaking awesome. Um, so it doesn't look like there's gonna be a a, a leopard on. Um, oh my god, did they really do that? They mix references here. That's awesome. So you've got the Back to the Future DeLorean with Kit's uh, 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 lights right up there in front. See, this is this is stuff you just notice if you're if you like if you like grew up in the '80s. This is just this is just. It's just fun. It really is just just really fun. Um, and then yes, that is that is totally him. So yeah, this is the back. This is the final battle. Okay. So right here, I never noticed that. Yeah, definitely. So I know I caught this, and that's freaking Chucky. That's Chucky the doll from the horror movie. That's awesome. He I don't think he was ever mentioned in the book, but um, but yeah, it's cool that they threw in some stuff. Uh, and that's probably somebody's avatar because that's one of the things you could get. Yeah, I think that I, it looks like he's gonna be he's gonna be piloting the RX seventy eight Gundam. Yep. So this is awesome too. I'm. This is awesome. This isn't an eighties reference, but it is a pop culture reference. Somebody's got the Iron Giant. Oh my god, that is awesome. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, so there are gonna be some obvious differences. Um, I. I'm wondering who, who, if they're going to have War Games in here. I don't know who produced War Games, um, the Matthew Broderick movie, but that's actually a really big part of the, um, whoops, my name. That's actually a really big part of the, um, the uh, story. Um, and then another thing too is that is where he lived, uh, that whole trailer park on top of trailer park thing. That is, that's a, that, like, they mention that in the book, and that's exactly how I pictured it, basically. Like, this, tr these trailers are just stacked because, because, because of overpopulation. Everybody is in the cities now. Like, nobody lives in the country. The soil is bad and everything. And so everybody moves to the city to try and get jobs. And so what they end up doing is everybody lives in trailer parks, and because there's no room, they just stack these trailer parks up on top of one another um so that's that's actually i'm looking forward to, to seeing this kind of stuff too um there was one last thing i i happened to catch is that no that's yeah see this is this is the kind of stuff you notice also so uh right here oh my god yes so right here you can you can see you can see their army this is uh, IOI's army. They all have the exact same thing. They all have the exact same car. Uh, meanwhile, you have a dude with it looks like a that looks like an updated version of the Mach Five. You have the the '60s Batmobile right here. So I think that is that's either the car from Death Race or um, or. Um, What's his name? Mad Max's car. It might be Mad Max's car because there's a lot of 80s references. Look at that right there. Holy crap. That's the spoiler from the A-Team van. That's awesome. 
Oh my god, I just realized that. Yeah, that's the spoiler from the 18 van. I'm thinking this, If I mean, there's so many 80s references. This here must be Bigfoot, um, the monster truck, which was huge in the 80s. Um, yeah, so, yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff uh, that I'm seeing in here. There's a lot of, a lot, a lot of really cool stuff in here. You can, and you can see it a little bit better here. This is definitely the Batmobile right here. You can see that black and red. There's the siren. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just getting hyped about this. Uh, there's a dude. Somebody's freaking avatar. Somebody's avatar is Ryu. I didn't notice that. Oh my god. Somebody's avatar is Ryu. That is so cool. Okay. Um, what else? What else? I, I could just pick this apart for days. Like, <laughs> uh, another thing too I should point out about this is that they did they did this correctly in that the guy because I I I was wondering if they were gonna go with somebody who was who looked way attractive, um, and they went with Hollywood unattractive, um, because the he's supposed to be grossly overweight and. Um, uh, because there's a point where he where he forces himself to lose weight, and he's not very attractive. Um, but his avatar is not supposed to look like him because he because uh, 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 because he doesn't like himself. And so they did go with an avatar that's a, a lot more stereotypically pretty here, and he doesn't actually look like the main actor, which is fine. I was wondering if they were going to go with Hollywood unattractive and then. Um, just have his avatar look like him and or just kind of like him. So this is one of the things I was talking about too. Based on the look, I'm pretty sure that's a Tron bike. I'm pretty sure that's the the motorcycle from Tron or one of the motorcycles from Tron. Oh no, it's not. That's not from Tron. No, that might not be from Tron. Actually, I think that's a bike from Akira. Dude, dude, I just realized something just now. More 80s references. So yes, that is Bigfoot right there. That's Bigfoot the monster truck. And then, right there, Delta City. Delta freaking City from Robocop. Oh my god. There's, I love it. They're still throwing in references. So, yeah, my guess is that this that bike is from Akira, um, which is technically 90s, but I think the manga came out in the 80s. Oh, my God, those are Battletoads. Right there? I'm pretty sure this and this are Battletoads. Oh, my God, that would be so cool. Okay, I think that's pretty much all I can pick apart at this point. <laughs> This thing is running really long, um, so I'm going to have to edit it down. But this looks like it's going to be absolutely epic. Um, not quite as epic as the book, but of course that's all due to licensing issues. Um, most, I, was think, I wasn't thinking about it until halfway through, and most likely because Warner Brothers owns DC, um, they wouldn't be able to get their hands on Leopardon because Leopardon is a Marvel, because it's Spider-Man's robot. It's owned by Marvel, which is owned by Disney. So, um, did Warner Brothers... The last time... There's only been one time Warner Brothers has ever worked with Disney, and that was Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And because of that, you... And I think uh, even though it was an epic, you know, joint venture, um, you'd be hard-pressed to find any copies of Who Framed Roger Rabbit because of the licensing issues. So, um... Yeah, so uh, it's great in concept, but um, unfortunately, it's most likely not going to be something that would be possible um, now that I think about it. But yeah, I'm loving this. I can't wait to see more. I would. I am definitely going to be checking this movie out when it comes out. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share. Um, hopefully, maybe we can get Ultraman at least. That would be cool. Um, but yeah. Uh, until next time, be excellent to one another and party on dudes. A couple other movies. However, this is James Cameron. Okay. 
So, like, James Cameron has a reputation where, like, James, I, I, I was watching Entourage. <laughs> and I, and uh, I've been watching, I've been, like, binging Entourage. And, one, and at one point, James Cameron shows up. And, and, like, the actual guy, James Cameron, shows up. And there's a point where they're like, I gotta work with James Cameron because like the dude makes a movie once every ten years and it's amazing every time. It's amazing. 